All across the cosmos, there are billions upon trillions of objects floating through space. Interstellar matter of both a small and large magnitude. Most of these moving parts are bound by gravity to a star or sun or brown dwarf, a piece to the planetary system's whole. They have a place of origin, a galaxy of neighbours, and above all, a home to orbit for all of eternity. But what about the assorted objects in the universe that have been ejected from a planetary system? Objects that wander throughout space without gravity to bind to? Could such matter exist in a cosmos stretching towards infinity? The answer is a resounding yes. All across the Milky Way and beyond are objects of planetary mass that traverse the universe free of explanation, a phenomena known as rogue planets, the loneliest worlds in all of space. Rogue planets, sometimes known as orphan, nomad, or free-floating planets, are considered planets by definition due to their mass equaling that of at least a dwarf planet, but not large enough to be considered fusers, like stars or brown dwarfs. In addition to their size, the object must also be free of gravitational binding or a planetary system. That being said, the fact that a rogue planet no longer belongs to a solar system doesn't mean it ever did. Many orphaned planets have origins similar to the planets still revolving around a sun, having been ejected from the rotation due to a number of possible causes. These events range from planetary collisions with other stars or black holes, gravity shifts when two stars pass one another and changes in orbit velocity, Planets can also go rogue due to the disappearance or destruction of the central star of which they orbit. Sometimes a star will detonate in an event known as a supernova, an explosion so intense it can launch some of those planets within the system millions of miles away. The nomad planets then spin into literal oblivion, void of enough gravity to pull them back in. They drift off into space and say goodbye to the corner of the cosmos they once knew. Realistically, due to the age of the universe and the inability to catalogue every supernova occurring throughout, it's estimated most rogue planets came to be like their non-free-floating brothers and sisters. When the Big Bang gave birth to all things, it brought with it a vivacity of star births and torrential outpouring of galactic collisions. These seismic storms definitely contributed to the launching of planets across space, meaning some of the orphans have been left to meander the universe for billions of years. Many have wondered throughout history if rogue planets could theoretically be born without an event, but rather formed via normal conditions of the universe. Stars are naturally ignited from pockets of hydrogen coming together to form a heavy enough mass. Sometimes these hydrogen pockets combine, but the mass isn't there to create a sun or a star, thus leaving the hydrogen as a form of rogue planet. These are considered the least interesting of nomad planets, and aren't much more than floating spheres of gas. Once a rogue goes off-grid, its habitat becomes beyond grey and gloomy because the planet loses its star, and ultimately its source of light and heat, the surface freezes over and its temperature sinks to horribly cold depths. Interstellar space is recorded at a temperature of just above absolute zero, or minus 273.15 degrees Celsius, and minus 459.67 Fahrenheit, and because the planet is surrounded by nothing else, it adapts to the temperature around it. Imagine the most frozen, most unbearably cold place on Earth, multiply it by a few hundred, and surround it with complete and utter darkness. That would be like waking up on a rogue planet.
We will probably never know the feeling of awakening on a foreign planet drifting towards the outskirts of space, blanketed by absolute night. But does that mean something, or someone, out in the great expanse isn't waking up to that very situation every day? The word day isn't accurate in the sense that we know it, seeing as though rogue planets don't have stars or suns to create the period known as day, but that doesn't necessarily mean life isn't existing on an orphaned planet right at this very moment. There are two requirements for a planet to have a life. The first is a liquid solvent must exist somewhere in the atmosphere so that minerals and required substances can travel between life cells. The second is an energy source for cells and organisms to retain and use for growth and sustained life. Earth is the only planet to prosper under these circumstances. We have the oceans as our liquid solvents and the sun as our energy source, providing light for photosynthesis across the continents. Of course, the distance from our central star makes all the difference. Any closer and our oceans would boil, any further away and our oceans would freeze, and regardless of proximity, life would perish as we know it. These perfect sets of circumstances make up an area of the universe that is considered habitable, also known as the Goldilocks Zone. Since astronomy entered the lexicon of exploration, scientists have been on a maddening search for other Goldilocks Zones across the universe, both within the Milky Way and beyond. Most of these searches have proved fruitless. Either suns don't burn bright enough to provide enough energy, or the system orbiting a star is made up of gaseous planets or other matter that wouldn't contain life in the first place. In 1999, the thoughts of the scientific community changed course and astronomers decided to use their imagination. They figured it was too restrictive only looking for lively planets using the Goldilocks parameters and decided to hypothesize ways a planet could sustain a life force even without a sun or liquid solvent. Thus their attention turned towards rogue planets. In theory, a nomad planet could harbor life if it contains oceans or other massive bodies of water trapped underneath a layer of ice surrounding the outer rim. While it's impossible to prove one way or another, these planets could have existed in the millions back during the early years after the Big Bang. The Earth-like worlds all launched from their orbits when the chaos of the universe was in full swing. Had they contained oceans, the absolute zero temperatures of interstellar space would have partially frozen the liquid solvents, potentially trapping the planet beneath the spherical ice sheet and insulating it from the extreme cold. The oceans wouldn't freeze all the way, however, as the radioactivity from the center of the planet would then create enough heat to warm the surface of the orphan below the exolayer of ice. In between the drastic heat and ice, would be conditions just malleable enough to survive, at least for microscopic organisms. This of course is dependent on the age of the planet. If Earth were to be ejected into the depths of space, the radioactivity at its core probably wouldn't be enough to keep the planet heated, whereas the early formed planets of billions of years ago would contain enough radioactivity to warm its rogue home through the preceding millennia. Rogue planets could also theoretically hold vast amounts of liquid if their atmospheres were rich with hydrogen, which would act as a blanket mechanism and allow the surface to thrive with whatever solvent was dominant. If the orphan had a moon still hitched at the time of its ejection, the moon could retain heat from the tidal friction down below on the planet and keep the solvent liquefied as well. These theories entertain the liquid solvent problem, but what about the energy source? Rogue planets are still without their star to orbit around, and thus without the light to provide growth or birth to begin with. However, they may not need a specific star to harness photosynthesis. Rather, if a rogue planet finds itself in a galaxy with a supermassive black hole at its nucleus, 
the high quantities of radiation emitted from the objects getting sucked into the centre could create enough energy to spring life on the orphan in question. You may ask, how is this possible? The first sensible thought is that the ultraviolet light from the radiation would destroy all of the living cells before photosynthesis could occur. It's a good point, but there are parameters that could prevent such destruction. If the nomad planet were to have what astronomers call shields, or additional layers around its surface, such as a few levels of Earth-like soil, or multiple meters of the liquid solvent oceans, they could filter out enough ultraviolet rays to allow for photosynthesis. To achieve this, the planet would most likely need to be within 1,000 light years of any particular galactic center. For context, planet Earth is about 25,000 light years away from the Milky Way's nucleus, thus why our reliance on the Sun for energy is so pertinent. Due to the sheer number of potential rogue planets scattered around the universe, Finding one that meets all of these stipulations borders on unlikely, and even if we did detect one, searching it for life is nearly impossible. We probably wouldn't be able to use the light from a parent star as a signal, a process used to discover other exoplanets and study various orphans throughout space. The technology and knowledge would need to improve if we are to have hope that the astronomers of our generally near future could take on such a task. All that being said, if we were to one day contact life on a rogue planet, it probably wouldn't look like how we usually envision life in the terrestrial landscape, because the situations would be so drastic for a rogue planet to harbour living organisms, they would likely resemble extremophiles organisms that live and thrive in extreme environments here on Earth, rather than animals or humans or complex creatures we are used to seeing roam our home planet. One fascinating possibility for an organism living on a rogue planet would be space tardigrades, known on Earth as water bears. Water bears are known for being capable of living in both extreme heat and extreme cold whether it's the tip of a volcano or the bottom of the Mariana Trench. They survive the most unthinkable climates due to their ability of cryptobiosis, the act of suspending one's metabolism for years at a time. Whether it's due to temperature changes, a lack of oxygen or high levels of radiation, water bears can enter and exit this state at will. While they would need other microscopic plants and invertebrates to feed on, a species similar to water bears, or more fittingly space bears, would need a prime candidate to be found on a rogue planet freezing at absolute zero, drenched in radioactive toxins. Another potential life form, albeit less interesting, would be Chloeocapsa a genus of cyanobacteria capable of photosynthesis due to their makeup of chlorophyll. Glowiocapsa live on wet rocks and might be able to thrive around the oceans on a theoretical nomad planet with a liquid solvent trapped underneath a layer of ice. They too can survive intense radiation and extremely cold temperatures, and have actually been observed in space already. A few rock samples with Glowiocapsa cells were kept outside of the International Space Station, and they survived for about a year and a half. While their bubble cell appearance is quite tame and invisible to the naked eye, the gelatinous sheaths that cover the nuclei can coat itself with bright colours such as yellow or green, hence their nickname, Glowcaps. If they were growing in high enough quantities, these simple extremophiles may give us an absolutely breathtaking visual of an entire rogue planet shimmering in the distant starlight. One of the most recent rogue planets discovered that withholds a slight potential for harbouring life is actually the closest a nomad has ever been spotted near Earth a planet categorised as OGLE 2016 BLG 1928. It was discovered in September 2020, after astronomers used a technique known as gravitational microlensing, 
a method of detecting objects that emit little to no light due to the phenomenon of the gravitational lens effect. This effect basically uses distant stars as flashlights. When a star or other dark object passes in front of another bright star, its gravity focuses the background light on itself. If another rogue planet or free-floating matter passes within its orbit, it would create an additional and noticeable blot point on the background star's brightness. This new free-floating planet in question was described as having an Earth-like mass, or in simpler terms, is thought to be a fellow terrestrial planet, the first rogue planet of its kind. Its actual mass is impossible to discern exactly, but researchers estimate it to be about three times the mass of Mars. Unfortunately, the microlensing event that allowed astronomers to spot the rogue planet only lasted about 42 minutes, and more information regarding the terrestrial nomad couldn't be collected. It's tempting to picture this free-floating unicorn like a second Earth, with continents and ice caps and massive bodies of water in between. If that is the true terrain of the once starbound planet, it's possible the object may fit the parameters of a planet that could sustain life, with a frozen outer layer protecting the liquid solvent within its ice shield. Of course, it would need a high level of radiation in its core, but the idea of another Earth with insulated life forms floating relatively nearby is an exciting thought. There are a few other well-known rogue planets that offer fascinating outlooks on the rest of the universe too. One of them is WISE 0855-0714, a sub-brown dwarf that is more recently thought to be a nomad planet, discovered in 2014 and estimated to be almost as old as the universe itself, 12 billion years old compared to 13.7 billion respectively. It's also the coldest object of its size and mass across all interstellar space. Its core temperature measured between minus 48 and minus 13 degrees Celsius. There's also OTS 44, discovered in 2000 and also sometimes considered a sub-brown dwarf. It too has one of the lowest ever recorded masses of a substellar object, just 11.5 times the mass of Jupiter. OTS-44 is peculiar in that it emits a higher than expected amount of infrared radiation, a hint that it also has a circumstellar disk of ice, rock, and other particles circling around it. This leads astronomers to believe OTS-44 could one day develop into a planetary system of its own, as the disk is building up matter like the Sun, albeit at a much slower pace. Of course, this makes the argument that the object is just a rogue planet wandering throughout the universe a bit weaker. How could such a sad, lonely object stuck in pitch black nothingness contain such potential for an entirely new system of planets, moons, and potential life? It's the mystery that all rogue planets provide us. A mystery about hope and knowledge and exploration and not always about the cold and chaos and isolation. They are the perfect microcosm of the cosmos as a whole, mostly unknown, but bursting with potential.